So, <clears throat> so I've got my seed grit, okay, I'm going for the lehiva here, and I've got this one, and I want to get this collar, pushes up because he doesn't he denies me, then I get this. Okay, and I stretch him out, and I overwrap here, and I've got basically the beginnings of the worm, but I just want you to uh, get to this position, then we'll talk about how to feed through and what we're doing with the grip here. You don't have to stay in the lehiva. As long as I've got this, which is technically Nasu does, I can do anything else now. What would be a good idea is to, is to swap between uh, De La Hiva and Spider type positions. Because this is remarkably strong at breaking its posture. I mean, if you try and posture up, it's, it's, it's not. And the theory being that this, that when you create tension here, it creates a, a band all the way around his lower back and up to his shoulder here. Which, which is, 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 and your leg does the job of creating, um, I don't know what you can say, a wedge or a, a sort of something to tighten that yeah. thing. And if you add that with sleeve, collar, foot grips, and things you can do with your foot, hooking, the lever, all sorts of things, you're, he's, you're basic, he's now trying to think, how am I going to get out of this? He's not thinking I'm going to attack you, he's thinking I'm going to get out of this stupid, annoying position. All right. So I want to spin it around so you can see this again. There's a couple of other things. This, uh, if you can't be bothered with all the setup, you can just go straight into it. Just grab the lapel, and we're going to, it's like the lasso guard. It's the equivalent of this, but we're doing it with uh, sleep. And you're going to punch your foot all the way through. It does not go on the leg. You're not playing a hip guard here. It goes through it, and it's almost like it's not doing anything. And that's why I found it weird to begin with. I think, what am I doing with that leg? It's just like a dead leg. And that's fine, because it's not creating any... It's serving the purpose of creating a lot of tension on this guard. And then what I want you to do is play around. You can go from here to here. You can spin around. Here. here. You can do all sorts of things. Sometimes you might want to loosen it up, push away. Sometimes you want to tighten it up. You can put the foot on high or low, as long as it's connected to the lapel and you aren't necessarily waging your foot on the hip. It's quite loose here. Um, just this alone, see how your partner feels, it's quite tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll talk about the next stage. So just feed the lapel through, we play with that <coughs> lapel guard uh, for a minute or so, and then we'll progress on to the two few sweets in it. Okay? One, two, three. Notice how I spin my body around to get it. Mm. I don't just, I'm not just static going, oh, I'm just going to do it, because it, it's, it's too obvious for him. He just stops, stops it here, around here, around here, here, and around here. Okay, this alone is, is quite a, you know, a powerful position as, as we discovered. It's not the world guard yet, but from here there are, you can Google it, there's all sorts of crazy stuff that people do. You know, it's all, because you've got a really entwined position, and you're pretty much concentrating the upper half. It's like having a, a really crazy version of the spider guard. Uh, maybe we'll explore that, but that's fine. Uh, it's not something I personally play a lot with. I do this, and I, I find that I am I'm holding this position a fair bit, but I'm just waiting to get to the, to the worm guard, and we'll, well, I'll show this now. So this one now has to feed underneath here, and you grab it underneath. So that's your, that's your objective. And the way to do this is we're basically going to, see this leg, we're going to sit up and we're here. We're going to grip. And we're going to change our grip to this side here. And this is a palm down grip. And this, and I'm, again, I'm, my foot isn't really doing anything. It's, I'm not pushing against it, it's just loose there. My whole leg is loose. And let's just see if we can get to this part, right? You can either lie down, you can sit up, you can face the weight, you can turn in, but Generally, with the one guard, we're turning away from the person because we're now going to do techniques which either affect the, the, the rear side. Okay, so you, what I want you to do is get to the position and swap with this grip and this one facing inwards. Okay, I'm not even trying to sweep, but you already feel that there's a posture breaking and it's very unpleasantly, you know, uncomfortable position. Then we're going to swap around here, facing away. I'm not doing anything, I'm not trying to sweep, I'm just getting used to this position. So it's a full thing again. Hang on. I like to grab a sleeve just to stop him from grabbing other parts. Over. 
here until I feel comfortable. The free leg sits up. Let's see how good this is. Reaching around back here, get something away. And then we just sit on my foot, it's quite loose in here. One thing I have to say finally is try and get your leg above his knee. When it's dropping down, then Dean has the uh, better control. He can just crush me with his knee at the end and get his leg out. When I'm over here, I have more control over what he does. Okay, so one, two, okay, so let's, I haven't talked about how to get into this whole position, but there are so many ways to get into this position. But let's for now worry about that later when we are just accepting the fact that we've set into this position, we can square up and we're able to get to first, the first grip. Let's call it ringworm guard because that's what Cornelius Cornelius said. Alright. From here, uh, because of the grip pattern, doesn't matter whether you're up facing up or down, um, the, the benefit of this type of grip is that I can face him, which means I can pull him down. Um, but what you want to do is if you just pull the collar and catch him unaware, you can get a sweep out of it. But if you look what he did, he already braced with his hands. So actually what you want is this, okay? And then what we're going to do is loosen the collar and kick away at it. You can't help but fall over. It's really, you've been really dumb, you've got nothing to do. And then you let go of the lapel and we're starting to take whatever position you force to usually side or back. Actually, I was going to do it as two techniques in one, but I think this is enough for now. Yeah. And then the next thing we'll do the other technique. So, to answer your question, Sam, say, what you're saying is this, if this gear was too short. No, what his belt was really tight around his gear. Okay, so tighten up your gear then. Because initially I was like that and really struggled with yeah. it. So, whatever position I did play, let's say it was close guard. Should be one close guard. Okay, I'm already starting to open up. Okay, then he stands up. up. We can even use our feet to do cheeky things like that because I don't want to risk my hands until I feel I'm in a position. Also, I'm not going to go straight for the thing, it's too obvious, he sees that. So I usually go for the collar, see, I can't reach it, and then the hand just goes down and then we've got hair. So let's go for the ring worm guard sweep. You could try this, he immediately grabs your, you don't know what this he grabs, so now you've got this. We're releasing the slack. See, look, this is why you need this leg loose, not wedged in really tight. Slack. I pull this towards me, I have to turn and face inwards. Don't forget that bit. Push his knee away, drop his shoulder. Do it carefully, guys, because they can fall and hit their shoulder quite hard. Let go, and whatever presents itself. Show you some, and I'll show you some. So for now, don't worry about how you go into the lapel guard. Let's just assume we are able to do this. So this leg must be quite mobile and loose. We're going to sit up. We're going to get the initial grip. But you could pull down and do a quick pull down, as, you know. And it, it, but he's always usually always going to use his hands to brace himself. I get the far sleeve, pull it in, and I loosen this. So that I can put my foot on his leg, push down. Just whatever you with the other hand, you can't stop yourself. I have to let go of the lapel now, otherwise I'll get stuck in there myself. You can even just go for here. Just past here. Does that help? Yeah. So everyone, one, two, three. The reason I showed that one first is because it's easiest to get uh, in terms of your the first grip that you want to do. This one here. That's the, it's easy to get because it's the nearest arm to it. Uh, uh, but you use the two, shall we say, systems interchangeably. There are loads of things you can do from here. Uh, a, a nice popular one is to take your leg out and then using this to <laughs> do crazy stuff like that. Very simple. Okay. Um, lots of stuff you can do from there. Okay. Um, but I wanted to show you today, just so you walk away with the idea that you use the two interchangeably. Don't just be obsessed with just this version because often he will defend and think you have to get rid of, get used to doing that version from here. He spin around, now I'm going to do it from here. Okay. Now, from when you did, this is the official worm guard where you're using the arm nearest to him and you have the palm down. Uh, uh, and we're basically, this now allows us to access techniques where he's falling backwards 
or we go around to take the bag, or anything where we, you know, we can access here, it's less so that we can, we, we're not so much able to attack the front fin. If you do want to attack the front fin, of course, you change to this grip, regardless of your position here. I'm here. But I'm, this time I'm here. Okay, in the official work guard. You're going to do a scissor sweep. The scissor sweep is, as you know, a, 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 a bottom leg that goes backwards and a top leg that goes forward. It's very important with a scissor sweep that your knee is above his knee. It doesn't work if it's down here. I'm not going to make him move. Whereas here you can already see I'm going to, going to uh, affect his body movement. You don't have to even do it like a violent scissor sweep. You just have to cup your foot on the back of his foot here. Get up on your shoulder and you have to raise your hips. And he's down, let go. The pelt. Magically we're in mount. We're always getting mount. <coughs> but we're in a better position. And it's a sweep and we get three points. That final technique, right? The, the worm guard itself. Here, yeah, switch here. If you try and scissor sweep from here, up a bit, touch a bit, it's a lot of hard work. Even if I raise up and advance my hips forward, almost like a hip bump sweep. But of course, this allows you to go here. And then it's, it's a very simple matter. Hmm. So the further around to his bum, the backside you are, you'll find the easier the sweep. And of course, it's good practice to do that because. Uh, next lesson, we're going to try and take the back. And to take the back, you do need to advance almost as if you are on the back. After that sweep, we go back to the first one. Do the first one again. Okay, and he gets up. Try the first one, it's not working. We go to the second one. And you do two sweeps in one. But do a few reps of the second one, the worm guard sweep. And then you've basically got the two basic sweeps from the, from the various grip patterns. And that will help, that will basically is your menu for a lot of spine. You can get a lot of happiness out of just those two. Yeah. Alright, I, I did anyway. Okay, one, two, three, let's go.